morning and welcome to the core connection i'm mira rubin here with you on enlightened world network and today's topic is waiting sometimes it feels like we're waiting for life to start and um we get to look at that 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 period of um transition and and maybe um incubation so uh but before we get started let's take a minute or two to get present let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it and imagine clean crisp oxygen flooding into your lungs flowing into your bloodstream nourishing all your cells all your organs bringing vital life energy to your body and being and as you exhale exhale any tension stress negativity fatigue and now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, energizing all your electrons, all your molecules, all your cells, and creating this brilliant beam of light from the inside out into the world lighting you up and lighting the world up. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's just gently press our palms together and softly, softly, softly rub your fingers against your palms to feel the deliciousness of that sensation, the tickling, the tingling, and the remarkable capacity that we have to experience these physical forms that allow us to involve ourselves in life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so good to have you here. Good morning, Robin. Wonderful to have you here with us and everybody else who's joining us. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we're talking about waiting. And uh, I don't know about you, but I've had periods of my life where, where I feel like I'm, I'm waiting, like um, I'm waiting for certain things to occur, certain stars to align, for instance, um, where I'm, I'm waiting for certain circumstances to come into play. And, and uh, in the face of this waiting, there can be a great impatience. And um, I, I think, the, the sense of waiting in itself holds, holds its own resistance. And I think we get to look at that because um, I, I think maybe, maybe this sense of waiting is, is being in a place of suspension where we're not really fully engaged with life, but we're, we're um, anticipating Robin says, hurry up and wait. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Good morning. Good morning, Rosalind. Happy Friday to you. We're talking today about waiting. It's great to have you here with us, Rosalind. Um, I, I know, like for me, uh, there, you know, there's the saying when waiting is full, um, you know, we can't, we can't push the tides, you know, things, things are going to unfold in their own perfect timing. And um, sometimes, unfortunately, the timing doesn't feel so perfect, because it's not, it's not on the timeline that we would wish for or desire, right, where, where um, it, it just seems like we're waiting. <laughs> and, uh, um, the, these passages, these moments, these times of waiting are, are, um, are an interesting time because, you know, it's, it's when, you know, it's like gestation, right? You're, let's, if you're, you're birthing a baby, um, it takes time. It just takes time. It takes a certain amount of time. And um, while time may be an illusion, 
uh, we still we still navigate through it in in our daily lives and as some good morning Bernadette so good to have you here with us we're talking about waiting and how um, I guess we we can often find ourselves in a position where we are waiting for certain conditions to be filled. And um, there's a limited amount of control that we have over the filling of those conditions. Things just have to unfold the way they have to unfold. And, and uh, we get to find whatever degree of grace we can find to be able to um, weather that that evolution or that um, emergence of, of uh, the right circumstances, right in big air quotes, right? The, the, the circumstances that enable the unfolding, the blossoming. You know, you can't, you can't go and uh, like pull on the, on the blades of grass to get them to grow. They just have to grow in their time. And um, so I, I think it's, it's an interesting balance because I, I guess waiting is paired with impatience, right? Um, so you, you nailed it. It's just perfect timing, Bernadette. Bernadette says waiting. Waiting equals patience. And I have been known to have a lack of patience, LOL. Yeah, so, you know, I can say the same for myself. You know, sometimes... I'm fine with just being with life as it unfolds and being in the flow of it and, and um, you know, just having the grace to flow with it. And then there are other times where, you know, you get to look at the contrast and, and there's this impatience, this, this uh, yearning for something to be different. Welcome, Zaid. It's great to have you here. We're talking today about waiting and um, this phenomena of, of time and space and patience and anticipation. And, um, you know, we, we, we know that there are certain circumstances that unfold in life that, that do herald changes, right? Like, we, we know that when certain things happen, there will be changes. And we can anticipate some of these changes for sure. And um, in, in the anticipation of the changes, there can be an impatience, a longing for those changes to have taken place um, or to be taking place more quickly than they uh, seem to be unfolding in their natural way. And um, so the, the, the challenge is that we can then tend to uh, be wishing our lives away, right? That we can be um, wishing for something that hasn't yet happened and, and allow that wishing and that projection to take us out of the experience of the moment. And so I guess the question is, how do we come back to this place of presence from, from the anticipation and the desire for things to be different, you know, for things to be at a different place? Um, to, to be at a new phase of things, you know, like, um, I think I talked earlier this week about a day that I remembered as a kid where I just really wanted that day to be done. And, and I wished it out of existence. I actually wished it out of existence. And, and um, now all I have recollection of is that I wanted that day to be done, but I don't remember what the, what the um, events of that day were. And, and so I, I think when we think about waiting, you know, we wait for certain passages, you know, maybe we're, 
we're in school and we're waiting till we graduate or we're waiting till we get that job or we're waiting till till um, we become a certain age or we're waiting we're waiting and um, I, I guess I guess the the challenge that I'm looking at is is how to be in recognition of the transformation and changes that are going to that are on the horizon that are that are right there that you can see on the horizon and and still being able to be present to the gifts of this very moment and every moment. Uh, without trying to, without bypassing them, without um, without neglecting the life that we have in this moment. So, uh, Rosalind says, until allowing becomes a very natural thing to do. Yes, and and I think you know it is so much about allowing, Rosalind, a hundred percent. It is about allowing the perfection of each moment and um, not getting ourselves all, all uh, focused out of this moment, projecting into something that doesn't even exist, right? Or projecting into a future that doesn't even exist, manufacturing an experience that doesn't exist, anticipating an experience that doesn't exist and bypassing our current reality you know like this is this is what we have in this moment and we uh, when we can recognize it perhaps we can allow ourselves to collect ourselves into this moment and to find the richness of it and to utilize that to um to prepare for to be to be um laying the foundation for whatever it is that's going to come next. And um, Robin says, I have patience for waiting in the stores on others. Uh, patience of job. As for me waiting for directions or things to transpire, that waiting's not so patient. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting. It's interesting to notice where we have patience and where we have impatience and, you know, um, where we get weary sometimes, where we get weary of the waiting, where we get weary of, of what seems sometimes like an endless pattern, an endless cycle. And what I realize is that in any given moment, we can actually choose to, to recalibrate the way that we're thinking about any, any given situation. So whether that situation is a situation where we feel like we're waiting or, or it's a situation where we would prefer something else to be occurring, uh, maybe we get to look at what richness we can find in, in the present moment that we might be overlooking because it's always there. You know, there's endless possibility in any given moment. And uh, we've been talking this week a lot about normalcy and continuity and the illusion of continuity and and uh, predictability. And the thing is that we get to disrupt that at any moment if we choose. So um, the whole idea of waiting is, is it's kind of, putting a hold on our lives, right? Like when we, when we think about waiting, we think of it as kind of a passive act, right? I'm just sitting here waiting, nothing's happening, I'm waiting. And, um, and as we observe that, 
Maybe there are things that maybe there are things that we can do while we're waiting that start to distract us from the waitingness into a beingness of actually doing something or being something or engaging in life in a, in another in another way. Good morning, good morning, Dennis. You are so kind. Um, we're talking about waiting, and and uh, I, I think that um, as a, as I'm as I'm thinking about it, it's it's like when we get into this waiting mode, what happens is we take ourselves out of the stream of life and sort of you know, sit in, sit in this, in this waiting room, you know, like, what am I doing in the waiting room? And I could, what could I be doing instead? What could I, how could I be being instead? How could I be being engaged instead of waiting? You know, waiting is kind of like life happening to us, right? Instead of for us and through us. And, um, It's funny, it's funny because I do find myself slipping into those moments, into moments of feeling like I'm waiting, where, you know, it's just like certain events of life are, are holding me at bay. Sometimes I feel like that, like at the effect of it, when, when in actuality, I could be actively creating my life, even in those moments, even despite the circumstances that, that will be heralding all kinds of change, you know? So Rosalind says, what do you want? What was the initial condition? What if what happened before doesn't matter? Oh, I love that. That's such a great question, Rosalind. What if what happened before doesn't matter? Today is a new baseline. Yes, exactly. That's what we're talking about. I'm understanding what results will be manifested in the future are based on causes that exist in the present. Replace goals with intention, which allows to move to inspiration. The doing is the outgrowth. Be Rosalyn, that <coughs> that's just so beautiful, so well said. Um, and and I love I love what you did is you just derailed the whole waiting thing, which is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Because it's what if what happened before doesn't matter. So you know a lot of our our um, projection of what's possible in the future has to do with what our ideas are of what's been in the past. And so if we if we recognize today as a new baseline, then um, it's it just gets rid of the whole waiting thing for sure, because now we have a new beginning, we have a new possibility in this moment, anything is possible. And um, Rosalind says, I'm understanding what results will be manifested in the future are based on causes that exist in the present. So, in this moment, in any moment, in every moment, we do have the opportunity to just create a whole new baseline and to say, what if what's happened in the past doesn't matter? What if, what if I can just say that's done? And we talked about this earlier this week, just sort of closing the door on uh, the patterns that we've had, the patterns that we've expressed in our lives, the the patterns we've identified with that we've believed ourselves to be and to be able to just release that opens up unbounded possibility in any and every moment. And so um, it's interesting because waiting, waiting as we, as I think about it is really kind of a projection from the past into the future right like this is an existing condition and i'm taking it in this moment and i'm projecting it forward and and i'm making my experience conditional upon 
that thing manifesting or not manifesting. So um, Ralston says potential is the projection of possibilities. Exactly, exactly. And this waiting thing is kind of creating a constraint, right? Uh, like I'm waiting for this or that to happen. And um, I'm putting things on hold until those conditions are met. And, um, and we don't really have to do that, do we? We, we can be, we can be creating instead of waiting. Um, we can be creating new avenues because like this waiting thing is we're waiting for some particular thing to manifest. And that particular thing, we have all kinds of ideas about what that means, what the implications of it are, what the consequences are gonna be, you know, what the impact is. And, um, and if instead we just recognize that, that that certain condition is going to occur at some time, it doesn't necessarily have to be particularly relevant to this moment. And we can, we can source new potentials in this moment, regardless of whatever the heck it is that we're waiting for. You know, what we're, when, we, when we do the waiting thing, what we're doing is sort of subverting the importance or the relevance or the, the, um, the existence of this particular present moment. So Dennis says, the hardest test in life is having the patience to wait for the right moment. Yeah, yeah, so patience, um, what is that, you know? I think that's a great question. And the patience to, write, to wait for the right moment, um, sometimes we, we let our, our eagerness and our will get the best of us. Good morning, good morning, Elaine, welcome. Uh, we're talking about waiting and, and the dynamic of waiting and how we can actually, um, if that, that waiting takes us out of the flow of life, essentially. So um, we, we I, I think that Rosalyn, you nailed it where you were talking about allowing and um, that, that there is a, um, there's a big distinction, a qualitative and quantitative distinction between waiting and allowing because waiting is, has some anticipation to it. You know, waiting has some expectation. That's really, that's where we're, now we're getting, uh, honing in on it. Waiting has some kind of expectation to it. And um, allowing is, is the open hand, right? Is, is holding with open hand, allowing something to unfold, allowing, allowing the emergence of something. Um, and the, the waiting has all this anticipation and expectation attached to it. You know, we're waiting for something. We think we know what that something's gonna be. So Rosalind says patience is, to be in upset without judgment and making the appropriate response. That's interesting, Rosalyn. I don't think that you have to be in upset to be in patience, but patience is to be in upset without judgment and making the appropriate response. I think, I think what you're getting at is that we're talking about responsiveness, you know, that, that, um, Presence, it's always coming back to presence, right? Elaine says, live now and truly be alive. That's the way for me now. Yeah, so um, being, being present, being in allowing 
that is that is being present that is being in the now that is allowing ourselves to um to be responsive to life and life's opportunities where this whole idea of waiting is again it's projection expectation like life is going to be great when i blah 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 well, you know when i finally da 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 everything's going to be good and and um just sort of waiting for life to happen to us instead of being really in the flow of engagement with it so Yeah, this whole idea of patience, impatience, allowing, um, anticipating expectations, all these things. There's so, so much that we get to juggle as humans, right? So many, so many different um, perspectives that, that shift our experience on a dime. And I guess uh, to move from, from waiting to, to curiosity, you know, it, may, I, it kind of makes me think, you know, like when we think about waiting, there's maybe a boredom to it. You know, I'm just waiting, I'm waiting, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not really being engaged with life and living. And um, so maybe in those moments when we feel that impatience for what, what, um, what we're desiring that hasn't shown up yet, uh, maybe we get to re-engage on a whole new level. Elaine says, I accept the moment as it is all as, is all is perfect now and I show up fully no judgment needed here for me so um being present that's what you're talking about Elaine is showing up in the moment and uh I guess we get to remind ourselves you know because this whole idea of waiting is is 100 percent taking us out of the moment and so we get to remind ourselves that the moment's where it's at. It's the moment's all there is, and uh, the waiting's just an illusion. You know, it's just an exercise that we use to keep ourselves separate from the experience of life. And so, we get to just refocus and bring ourselves back to present and to allowing. And and I think that maybe the antidote for waiting is curiosity to just be in wonder and awe of what is unfolding now and now and now from from one moment to the to the next and elaine says learning to sit with boredom is a very powerful experience and can transcend us from within to accept what is now in peace i think i think that's true that learning to sit with boredom you know, because what is boredom? Boredom is boredom is also kind of a dissociation. It's uh, because when we're engaged with life, when we're really present, when we allow ourselves to be present in life, there is a multitude of of um, sensory input that allows us to be in awe and wonder in any given moment if we allow it. You know. So, yeah, this um, sitting with the boredom, you know, to get past it, uh, the, the boredom itself is a disengagement, really, with life. And um, Lane says, moving to the heart beyond the conditioned mind, our beliefs. Yes, yeah, so um, being present, that's what it comes down to. Always, 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 it keeps coming back to being present. And um, there's, you know, in, in the moments of boredom that we might experience, what's going on is that we're not, just not seeing what's there. 
because in any given moment we can connect to the the absolute magic of life itself of perception of our physicalness of what it is to have this sensual vital living experience as as animated beings on this planet and um so I guess when we think about waiting and we think about patience and impatience, what we get to do, good morning, good morning, Lisa, so good to have you here. Um, we get to bring ourselves back to the richness of the moment. And that's what Elaine's saying, yes, now is all there is. It really truly is. And, and we go through all these machinations to fabricate futures and pasts and possibilities and really all that there is is this thing this moment this this now so with that another week has gone by and a hell of a week it's been i have to say um it's remarkable to me how much change can happen in the blink of an eye and um and yet how how things can seem to remain unchanged for endless periods of time as well. So that's the enigma of life, folks, right? Um, Elaine says, seeing through the eyes of a child like wonder is truly wise. And and that's where the the magnificence of life resides, is when we're able to to be present to life without all of our preconceptions. And um, it's amazing to me how much time and energy we spend trying not to live life, you know, trying to avoid the, the experience of life itself. And uh, I guess we get to remind ourselves to just come back, come back to the moment, come back to the moment come back to the moment and then when time is full the evolution of of whatever it was we might have been waiting for will evolve and emerge and transform so thank you so much Rosalind thank you so much um restful weekend to all before the holiday week ahead and um, my wishes to you, my appreciation to you, so much love to all of you. And um, I'm Mira Rubin, this is The Core Connection, and I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I invite you to check out the other wonderful programming on Enlightened World Network, Enlightened World Living, EWN, One with the Earth, and the beautiful, beautiful community of souls that are, are bearing the light. And so deep, deep gratitude to you. And uh, Lisa says, life goes by like a flash. You have to make memories now. So with that, may you make wonderful memories this weekend. May you have rich rich connection and so much joy and until next time lots and lots of love